Jeff Skunk Baxter talks about who Ringo Starr really is. He's played with Ringo and recorded two albums with him. And there's an interesting story in here where Ringo had one of those, I wouldn't say cathartic, but sort of psychic moments. Because as we've mentioned before, and a lot of you know this, Jeff Skunk Baxter worked top secret stuff for the government for quite a few years. He was always on call. He never knew when he was going to get called. It's kind of like Men in Black stuff. This is a good clip about Ringo Starr on Rock History Music. Enjoy. Ringo Starr, I get a feeling from, I think I've told you this before, that you don't get starstruck, but uh, what was it like uh, working with Ringo Starr on those two albums? Well, first of all, he's a sweetheart. He's a really good guy. He's more interested in accomplishing something than being somebody, Lieutenant Colonel John Boyd, the man that invented the OODA loop and changed air combat tactics forever, said you can do one of two things. You can either be somebody or you can do something. And I think Ringo Starr was one of those guys that was less interested in being somebody than doing something. I remember we were doing a session uh, with Mark Hudson was producing. We were up at the village. We are playing pedal steel. And those were the days when we all carry pagers. And at the beginning of the session, he said, you know, Skunk, I've got a feeling that that, uh, you're going to, you know, we're going to get interrupted. And you're probably going to get a call from the Pentagon. And I said, well, okay. I mean, all right. But so away we go. Half an hour into the session, my pager goes off. And literally 30 seconds later, two guys in black suits walk into the studio and say, we got to go. And Ringo's laughing. He says, it's okay. It's okay. You know, do what you got to do. We'll finish it at another time. I don't know how he knew. I mean, he knew I was that I had my, you know, a, another career. But I just thought that was, first of all, it was prescient. It was almost like being able to be a fortune teller, you know, look in the future. But he saw it not as a problem. He just saw it as a part of the deal. Okay, oh, yeah, guys, black suits. Black SUV, he's got to go to the Pentagon. Okay, great. We'll, uh, you know, going to be back day after tomorrow. We'll finish it. Stuff like that. Just human, unperturbed, unaffected. Um, I don't know quite else how to describe it. Oh, what's your thoughts on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I know you're there. I'm like anything else that um, is designed to recognize one's talent and one's accomplishments. It's a tremendous honor. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It, it, you're a little kid, you know, and you think about this stuff. You never really think about it. But when you receive accolades and you receive um, um, good, uh, good feelings and good vibes, I guess, mm-hmm. and and recognition for your accomplishments from your peers. It's hard to say there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. Are you? Uh, um, first of all, did your parents both? Uh, are your parents around? Or your mother's not? You said. Right. Oh, my mom. My mom passed away. Uh, a few years ago, my dad passed away about 12, 13 years ago. Sorry. The, the, no, the, no, I appreciate it. Uh, so did they get a chance to see you working for the government? My dad did. Absolutely. What was his reaction? Well, um, it was extremely happy for me. Yeah. And what was interesting, and I'm not going to get into a lot of details because we're talking about things that are classified and stuff, but I never knew what my dad really did because I didn't have any clearances when I was a kid. Then when he retired, he didn't have any clearances and I couldn't tell him what I was doing. (laughs) 
So a four-star general, or the three-star at the time, uh, I went to him and I said, sir, can, uh, if I give you my dad's DD-214, which is his, um, his uh, 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 Department of Defense uh, documents, can you get him a high-level security clearance for 24 hours? And he said, sure, I'll do it. So then my dad and I went into a SCIF, which is a secure compartmentalized intelligence facility, and sat down and started to talk. And it was amazing. I had no idea. And he had no idea. And then, of course, I took him, when I took him to the Pentagon a couple of times when, you know, when I was there, and, and people are walking down the hall, I go, hey, Loy, how you doing? I'm going, oh, man. All right. I, we got to talk. We gotta oh, my talk. God. We got to talk. That's great. When when you were with the what well the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan stages, were you reading as much then? Yes. Really? Yeah, I love to read, and <clears throat> it's just what. And if I have a question, I guess now people go on the internet as much as possible and try to find the answers. But at the time, there was really no internet other than what was happening over at ARPA and um, and the and the national labs. So it was books. Books, books, books. There's information on Jeff Skunk Baxter's brand new album, his first solo album of all time. Sure took him a lot of years. He's thinking of doing another one now, by the way. Right in the description of this video. Remember, if you want to make a donation to the channel, there are links at the very top to PayPal. You can join our Patreon, get early access to all our videos from all of our channels. But really, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, share them on social media, and comment on them. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.